Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and I just finished up putting the foam on the outside of the foundation. Uh, we had a really productive ye day yesterday. Uh, it was knocking off all of these pins and then putting asphalt seal on the entire foundation. I ended up for this foundation using two five gallon buckets of this stuff. I way overbought. You can see those blue pails back behind you. There are seven left. Um, I you know, I, I use the, the numbers that I found on like online calculators uh, and it suggested I might need seven of them uh, and I overbought, I went to ten and I don't know, I did not need seven and I put it on pretty thick uh, too and you don't want to over, over put it on but in any event, I've got many left over. I can bring those back though because uh, one of the great things about Home Depot, it's a place where you get, uh, you know, hardware and stuff like that, is that they have a really great return policy so it's always safe to just overbuy and then you can just bring stuff back. Uh, but this morning I was just finishing up the last of this wall, putting the pink foam on top of the uh, on top of the seal that I put up there, and the pink foam here is really this is really going to be what keeps the water away from the foundation. There's two inches of foam that is completely waterproof, and you know it's going to keep the inside very very dry. What I'm doing now is just going around and kind of taping them all together so that they uh, you know they stay in line with each other. I've got them propped up with these sticks. Here, uh, you know, just kind of holding them up against the foundation, and then I used uh, spray foam to fill in all the cracks. And the spray foam, really, more than being uh, there for insulation, is really there as a water seal to keep water from going in uh, the seams between these. You, you might be able to see there's a couple little uh, breaks here. I was able to use some scrap up, uh, and uh, really efficiently got everything on there with very little scrap uh, left over. The one last thing I'm going to do to kind of tether these down uh, is. Uh, to use the uh, the anchor bolts, these guys right here, this one right here, and the anchor bolts are there for uh, putting down the the sill plates later on. But for now, they're a pretty good way of anchoring these guys down because uh, duct tape doesn't stick very well to concrete. Uh, it, you know, if there's any kind of dust layer over it or anything like that, it's not really going to stick very well. So I just take a little bit of duct tape, wrap it around, bring it over the top, and especially these places where. Uh, where these guys stick up past where the concrete is, it's a good idea to hold them down in case some wind comes by and you don't want the wind grabbing at them and, and messing them up. So I'm finishing that up today and then uh, as soon as I get back I'm going to let the uh, contractors know they can finish up this perimeter drain here all around the side, start back filling and, and this uh, show is really getting on the road. Oh, this is something else I found around here. If you have contractors, uh, it's, you know, good to think that they might be leaving things like this around. This was left over from the concrete people uh, and I, I walked around and it was like sitting like this with the nails sticking up. So, oh, there's another one right over here. Yeah, so, uh, you know, when you're hiring people in, sometimes, you know, they just, they have debris, they throw it off to the side. Sometimes, usually, it's just like, well, there's a cigarette butt here, uh, you know, bottles, bags, things like that from their lunch, but sometimes it's boards with nails sticking up on them. Uh, and especially with me having River, who sometimes comes uh, you know, to the site, it's important to you know, be aware that that kind of stuff may be around. So if you do this and you have contractors coming in, be aware they may be leaving things that are really dangerous. That's it. Thanks for watching.